Yeah. Welcome, everyone. Um, see you actually in person versus like remotely. It was actually kind of interesting. One side note is so last night I had a dream that I was actually up here presenting, but I was actually presenting in like a t shirt and jeans. <laughs> And then I realized that's how I've been presenting for the last two years. I had to actually find this. I was like, oh, hopefully the moss didn't go after it. <laughs> but okay, so all joking aside, was, yeah, <laughs> let's talk about the data enclave. Um, let's see if I can move forward. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit into just so the data enclave was some hardware that Dell gave us. And we moved it into the Mass General Brigham infrastructure. It got put into one of the data centers, and in the in the data center, it was put uh, some of the hardware was put into what was known as the DMZ, the Demilitarized Zone. And at that point, it was it's in the network, but it's in its own special area that it's not in the main network that has Epic and all that stuff. It's in its own special one, but it's still protected by firewall. So, and that's what we wanted. We wanted to be able to access it from remotely, also access it from internally, but it being its own silo that's pr that is protected and everyone's happy. Because obviously, having it next to Epic is dangerous. Uh, so, uh, is this all? Okay, so, so the idea, if I can try to do this. Okay, speak in. So the idea is you have a, see, is you have an outside investigator who wants to access the data enclave and utilize it. So this outside investigator is, as you see, is on the internet. And so, I set my timer so that I wouldn't go over. <laughs> oh, I, oh, so, okay, okay, that's great. Uh, Okay, so you have an outside investigator who wants to use it. Uh, they're on the internet. They connect up through what we're using the VMware Horizon. So the VMware Horizon is uh, an infrastructure that I think of it kind of a, as a remote desktop if you remote desktop into your PC. Um, but it gives you, there's lots of security you can do with it. You can like limit whether someone can print from it, whether they can copy stuff out of it, whether they can copy stuff in, because we'll, as a data enclave, you want it to be secure. And you might want to say people cannot bring data in or bring data out. So the Horizon client gave us all that functionality, which is great. And so then once they're in the DMZ, they have access to whatever we want to get, uh, whatever we want to create. We created some ITB2 app servers. We created some ITB2 database servers with SQL Server, Oracle, Postgres, with like 13 million synthetic patients in it with a billion uh, facts, just gen generic uh, synthetic data that they can then use. And we also have an Isilon data storage with terabytes of data. So now that we have all this, uh, really like, okay, so why? And it's for the community. So if you wanted to uh, work on a plugin, you would contact me or Sean and be like, okay, I'm interested in doing this for the community. Can you spin me up a VM and give me some storage? And then I can test my plugin against some synthetic data. Once you've kind of done that, you can then take that plugin, run it in house against your real data to verify that it works with real data. But you could also be collaborating with other people on your plugin. So you, you might be thinking, okay, why don't I just do it at home? Uh, on my own servers. Uh, but if you collaborate with other people, then you can develop your plugin with multiple people. And then, and then you take your plugin and test it against real data at home. Uh, so that was kind of, that's one of the use cases. Um, so this, this is really just uh, VMware. So I'm kind of showing you what an administrator would kind of see. Um, and so it's actually just virtual machines and the, the ability to like, you can upgrade them as want, as how you feel on the need, add more memory, add more hard drive, um, add more CPU to it. That's all done within the VMware. Um, the other, so this, uh, 
this was just recently. So with the, some of the hardware, we have some other hardware that we actually put in the real in, uh, MGB network. And that's where a couple of us internally are going to use it for uh, I2B2 projects, maybe some bear booster. But this is uh, Promax. It's uh, basically an open source version of VMware. So I just wanted to point that out that we're going to be utilizing, we're, we're testing this out to see if we'll work with some of the other hardware to basically make an internal enclave. Uh, and this is uh, just another admin um, UI to show you what the uh, Horizon server side looks like. So there's kind of the, the other side of the picture besides you looking at it from a client side. This is kind of the admin side, so it's fairly. So you have a VM that you, we spun up for you, and so what, what can you do with it? What does it have? And so basically you get like a, a Windows 10 machine, and on that Windows 10 machine, we have installed all these applications that you can use. Uh, there's uh, Jupyter Notebooks, there's uh, SQL Server Management Studio, there's uh, ITB2 Workbench, uh, some other various uh, genomics tools, so you, and then you have Eclipse and uh, Visual Studio. So you have a ton of tools already at your disposal that you can just start to use. And you also have some data storage. So you see there's a volume D that has a terabyte of space. So there's also space available for you to utilize. It's recommended that you save a lot of that stuff onto the uh, main store, the Isilon storage versus leaving it on your C drive, because if that virtual machine gets corrupt or dies, then it, we might not be able to pull that data back. Uh, basically, same thing as your laptop. You don't want to leave your data there. You want to kind of put it to the cloud, because if you drop your laptop, then you might not be able to recover the hard drive. Uh, so this is just a, a typical ITP2 instance that you've probably seen a million times. But this just shows you there's like 600,000 patients in this one tree versus the standard 133 that we typically have. But this is all fake data. This is all synthetic data. So it's not like a real, all the stuff on the enclave is synthetic. Um, and this is just another quick uh, view of the various different databases and a query of ITB2 in the background. And then a 10-node shrine network that we just kind of set up um, just for, to test out and see how that worked with Hundred uh, with thirteen billion million patients. So, so the exchange here. So now going back to work collaborating with other groups. Uh, so we have a GitLab that we installed in this enclave that you can use to check in code, check out code. And so that's the idea of the repository. It's like the GitLab dot um, dot net that you can create a repository, load the data in, and then utilize it with. Uh, other groups. Uh, so that was basically the data enclave. Um, yeah, it's basically a, like it's the summary. It's a uh, community where if you have a project that you want to utilize this, talk to Sean and myself and we can make it happen. That's what Nick we used. That's what he was demoing is from that data enclave. Uh, I don't think it was officially announced, but when he was saying that he was dragging from the data enclave to his local, that was coming from the DOS, DOS servers. So people want to demo this last. Yeah, the URL, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so tomorrow we're having the ETL group working group at 10, so hopefully some of you guys can come. Uh, and then we can talk about some of the ETL stuff and what? Oh, is that nine? Oh yeah, you're eight to nine. I'm nine. To... Wait, no, you're eight to nine. I'm nine to ten. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not enough coffee in the afternoon. <laughs> so, okay. Any questions? <laughs> and I got fifteen seconds to go. <laughs> yeah.